Hello everyone. Now we're currently just at bedroom volume. I don't have any special microphone in the room other than talking to just my iPhone. The speaker part, sorry, the microphone part of the iPhone is facing the grill cloth of my Marshall Astoria all valve 30 watt amp. Now this sound here is just bedroom volume. Now don't be fooled, that's just a pedal, that feedback. That's the Digitech Freakout. And as you can see, I was just talking over it, so. This is just the amp. Actually, there's a reverb pedal on. Purely conversation level, we can speak over it. Again, there's the Digitech Freakout. I think that's a nice tone. Different guitar, but the same conversation level volumes. As you can see, successfully talking over it. Still a nice tone. So first of all, no video of mine would be complete without this silly plant tickling my ear lobes as we speak. There we go. Right. Now, if you listen carefully to that opening clip, you will even hear my pick and string noise. That's how quiet it was, right? So I'm going to read off my little script here, what I have prepared. Right. Let's get into it. Now, that sounded so scripted, eh? Let's get into it. But do stick around because at some point this, I'll talk a bit more about this in a minute, but this is a true class A old school valve amp. And I will crank it for maybe 60 seconds at some point if the neighbours will oblige. And we'll see what all the fuss is about, you know, power tube saturation. So stick around for that. Firstly, let me cover some key points. One. This video is not about me saying valve amps are better than solid state or vice versa. That's up to you. Two, this video assumes that, like me, you will face the beam of your amp when you're playing in your bedroom. Uh, that makes a huge difference, having the beam coming right at you if you're at low volume. That way you'll hear all the sparkle and all the nuances from your amp. Three, this video only covers my sonic territory, in other words, everything from clean through blues crunch, slightly overdriven, up to occasionally a rock sound, but never metal. So that's the only genres I can really cover. And four, uh, this video is in response to my Boss Katana video recently, where I announced that it's been sold. And the main comments coming through on that one were things like, uh, don't valve amps have to be turned up really loud before they sound any good? Um, aren't they unreliable? And aren't they one trick ponies? So I'll cover all three of these, call them myths if you like. You can make your own mind up after this, this video. So I'll cover all three myths uh, in this video. But firstly, looking back to why, are valve why do valve amps even have this reputation? of uh, not sounding good at, at low volume. So firstly, it's the players, it's history basically. So the players in history, my heroes were your Santanas, your Claptons, your Rory Gallaghers and Gary Moores. And of course, their music was the stuff of cranked power tubes. Prison walkways and all that stuff. Yeah, we're not gonna get that in the bedroom or the apartment. So we'll just kiss that idea goodbye. But we can have something called preamp distortion which 99% of my channel is my preamp section of my amplifier overdriving. And the second aspect of history that tells us valve amps are no good unless they're loud is the equipment itself. These old amps that make us feel that way are now classed as kind of dinosaurs. It's your Fender Basements and your Marshall Plexis and Tweeds and the Fender Twin, the Vox AC30, I mean, God. So these amps had no ability to give us gain or drive unless they were really uh, turned up way loud. But the good news is things have moved on. 
And here are some things that I think are significant game changers. Most modern amps now, most modern valve amps come with a, a master volume. So we get a dedicated gain knob to turn. So we can dial in a little bit of hair and then adjust the master. You couldn't do that in the 60s. Um, and yes, I know that's not power amp distortion, that's preamp distortion. But as I say, I think the videos on my channel show that preamp distortion can sound pretty nice. Um, then, next thing, power attenuation or inbuilt power attenuators. More and more valve amps, Morgans and uh, some, some Friedmans and my Marshall has power attenuation, not uh, as successfully as the Cornell, but it has power attenuation and it has a gain knob. The Cornell doesn't have a gain knob, but it has very effective power attenuation down to something like a quarter of a watt. The Vox, no attenuation, but it has a gain knob, so you can dial in just a little bit of hair and then as much volume as you can get away with and you've got a lovely sound. This Supro is the only old school amp that needs to be whacked up. Um, very simple control layout and I bought it for its charm. I wanted a class A valve amp that I could just now and again for 60 seconds is enough to satisfy me and I'll do it later on in this video is to hear what the power tubes are like when they're cooking. But So you use a pedal with that amp and I enjoy this amp regularly with my pedals. Which brings me to my next thing that's changed, the next game changer and that is pedals themselves. You and I have a plethora of pedals to choose from. My heroes had like range master treble boosters and fuzz faces. They didn't go to guitar, guitar or Andertons or whatever and, and have all this choice. So we've got that in our favor that we can use with our valve amps. And the final thing that I would say is a game changer, which even I haven't got yet and I don't know if I'll bother getting one because I don't know if I'm quite a tone hound to that degree. And that is a standalone power attenuator that and you take the speaker out, so the, the cable out of the speaker at the back of your amp, put it in the attenuator, another cable to the amp section of your amp, the amp, the power amp, and it just kills all the decibels before it hits the speaker. But that's quite expensive, and I think my research on YouTube tells me that the best one I could get that's purely dedicated to the tone at lower volumes is something called the Fryette power station, F-R-E-Y-E-T-E -E or something, but that's 700 quid or something. I might indulge myself at one point, but it is not on my radar. I don't think it's necessary, but I would love to see if it's as effective as the YouTube videos make it out to be. So those are four sort of game changers uh, that put Valve Amp suddenly back into the realm of us bedroom players. So. If we say myth number one was valve amps only sound good when cranked, hopefully my videos show that that's a bit of a myth. We can get great tones at low volume. Myth number two, aren't valve amps one trick ponies? Well, the ones I like are one trick ponies. Uh, you notice I don't have a Mesa Boogie with 25 knobs along the front. Um, that's, I mean, to use an analogy, you can buy a, a big SUV these days that will be comfortable family transport one minute and at the flick of a switch or the change of your mood, you can floor it and it's hot hatch quick, sometimes even supercar quick. But that does not replace jumping into a little two-seater Mazda Miata, as you say in the USA, or an MX-5 in the UK and blasting around the country lanes or jumping into some rustic old Land Rover. But you get the idea. When I plug into my Vox, it's like a sports car. You just get Vox. When you plug into the Marshall, you get this big girthy Les Paul sound. When you plug into the Cornell, it's instant tweed heaven. You plug into the Supro, it's its own thing. So that's what I like if you're into versatility and I'm not into versatility then you, I'm sure you can get valve amps that do that like Mesa Boogies and other such things. It's the same with guitars. My guitar choices you can clearly see I do not like versatility 
and like Les Pauls and Telecasters to be Telecasters and the three three. I could buy a PRS and sell all my guitars and PRS would do a great job of covering them all, but that turns me right off. Um, so I like the one trick pony aspect of uh, of valve amps. And myth number three, aren't the unreliable? Well, I've had loads of valve amps in the past. I've had a Mesa Boogie, I've had a lovely orange uh, all valve 30 watt combo, I've had Fender Twin, the, I've had a Hot Rod Deluxe, um, a Marshall Half Stack, but I can't speak for them really because I never owned them for long periods of time. I did gig them all, but the only one I can really speak for that I really gigged and carted around everywhere, uh, which is maybe why I've got a bad back, is my Fender Twin, and that was really reliable, never really let me down. Now and again it would crackle, you would sit and think, what's, what's that noise? It'd crackle, 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 and then it would calm down. So I had a couple of services over the 15 years, it was still on the same valves, so it was a cracking amp in terms of reliability. I only sold it because I was bored and wanted something different. Uh, and then there's my amps that I currently I have, and they've all been great. The Supro is starting to talk to me a little bit. Now and again I'll be sitting playing and I'll go and be like, excuse me, and so it has a wee cough to itself now and again. But it doesn't really bother me, I'm going to continue to enjoy it. If it was my gigging amp, I'd maybe start to worry. But at some point, when I can be bothered, when it coughs more and more and more, I'll get it serviced <clears throat> and maybe it'll be a dry solder joint or a, a valve on the way out or something like that. But no, they've all been great. So I have been lucky, except you might know from my channel, a while ago I had a liking for a Princeton because I love the concept of a Princeton but I got one it wouldn't work they replaced it that wouldn't work they replaced that and that one wouldn't work so then the guy at the shop said you want to check out a nice amp that'll work and he said try the Cornell I've had the back off it and you want to see the hand wiring and we did we had a look at it like, it looked tasty plugged it in and I've never looked back um, so but generally I've had good success with valve amps now, what else I'm going to tell you? So, before I whack this uh, little Supro up, if you like solid state amps, then great, I like them too. Uh, I'm sure your solid state amp will be lighter, it'll be potentially more robust and reliable than a valve amp, it'll be lighter probably, it'll sound just as good to your ears and maybe everybody else's ears, if not better. It's up to the beholder. Um, and it'll certainly be more versatile in terms of tone and general function, what you can do with it. But if you're on the fence and you're unsure as to whether buying a valve amp is a good idea, I'm not going to necessarily recommend it. It's my choice just now. I'm on a journey and the valve amps, I'm just loving them. But if you are going to be thinking about a valve amp, do strongly consider one with a, a gain knob, a separate gain knob or an inbuilt attenuation, or decide that you're a pedal guy and buy one that's got a great clean sound and you can use your pedals to get gain. So that's my thoughts if you're on the fence as to, as to try trying valve amps. Um, what valve amps to be wary of? I would say strongly think twice about something like that. And by that I mean, in this case, a Supro, but something like a Princeton. Apart from the fact that I've had issues with Princeton with uh, not working correctly, I love the concept of a Princeton. A lovely, famous sound, dead simple, but it's old school. And so it should be. It should be old school. But you're going to have to crank it. And you can't do that in your bedroom. So you're going to need pedals with it. There's no attenuation. Or these old school lamps like a basement. I would love a basement, but it's old school. It's not going to be good in a bedroom unless it's a, a pedal platform. But that's a waste of a basement, if you ask me. Something like, uh, I like these Marshall, I think they call them the SV20. They look just like little plexis. But, and despite having attenuation that goes from 20 watts down to 5, 5 watts are still too loud to get natural crunch. So again, you're going to need pedals with that. So just be wary of that sort of stuff. Um, amps that I, I'm not thinking about, I'm not gonna buy any amps, I've got enough, but I can't stop looking. And the amps that turn me on are things like um, Morgan. They've got really good power scaling, 
and they cover all the sounds from British to American. Uh, I like the thought of, what else do I like the thought of? Bad Cat. Ooh. Is that a Bad Cat Cub? I like the sound of that. Again, it's got some sort of power attenuation. It's, uh, so these are the things I'm thinking of, but you might decide that either you're like me and that you're a Fender or a Vox or a Marshall guy, or that you like the idea of more modern equivalents like the Sewer amps and uh, Dr. Z and what was the other one? Uh, anyway, you get the idea. So loads to choose from. Right, well we crank this, uh, this little Supro and, and see what it's like. We'll just do it for 60 seconds so you can hear what the fuss is about and then the neighbours can just have to forgive me. You ready? Sorry folks, it's just so loud. Good sound, but um, nah. It's a nice sunny day, there's people sitting outside. I've got the windows shut and the curtains drawn, but I just, I cannot unleash 25 watts of valve power. But the tiny amount you did here, it's a luxury, it's a real raunchy sound. I've got a YouTube video, I think it's called cranked where I cranked the Vox and a few others and the Supra was one of them and it's a gorgeous sounding amp when you just run with it particularly with a humbucker but, oh, that was ridiculously loud there sorry if you wanted more than that <laughs> I do apologize but as you can see I was really struggling anyway thank you very much for joining me on this video and sorry to disappoint you there at the very end I've kind of disappointed myself I really wanted to have a, a good a good 60 seconds, but it's just too loud. Ah, anyway, bye for now. All the best to you.